Hello. Please teach her. Hi. Rosie, are you Hi, okay? Hi, Jerry. How are you? Fine. Are you? Fine. I'm well <laughs> at home. We will survive. Yeah. I hope. Yes. Yeah. You'll see. We, we will. <laughs> well, another class. I, I can okay. see your I can see your plate number from Texas behind you. Sorry, what? No, we no, just you know like uh, uh, I can see the Dallas the Dallas the Dallas uh, the Dallas ah, yes. plate number behind behind the, the student. Uh, it brings me a good a good memory. So, you know what I mean? So nothing yes. teacher, just okay, yes, you are recording. Thank you very much. Good, let's begin our class. So we are supposed to switch off the cameras, switch off the microphones. That's it, good, very good. Uh, George, I, I began the recording. Okay, friends, let's begin by checking the homework. You know, the homework was dealing with uh, reading and use of English. The first part of the homework was in the workbook, page 34, reading and use of English. This exercise over here, can you see it? Can you see the book on the screen? Good. Thank you, Alex, Miriam, Sara. Thank you very much. So you know that this exercise over here. Thank you, Sarai, Silvia. Mike. Hello, friend. Well, this is the exercise, Laura. So let's begin by checking. You, as always, zero is the example, so they give you the answer. But let's begin with number one. I had an invitation from Miranda to join her ice skating tomorrow. And then you have to write a very similar sentence using go. Miriam invited what? What did you write in the space in blank? Can you send me your message? What was your answer for number one? To go, invited me to go. Any other answer, something different? Or did you write exactly the same? Me to go, invited me to go. Yes, that's, that's exactly the answer. Invited is part of the sentence they give us. So you don't have to write invited. Me to go is what you have to write in the space in blank. Me to go. Miranda invited me to go ice skating with her and her friends the next day. Let's go to number two. Lee told us he was sorry that he hadn't come to our party. And you have to use four. Yes. So Lee apologized. What is your answer? For not coming, for not coming, for not come, for not coming, for not coming, Rosie. Well, friends, for not having come. Well, yes, Sarah, there are two possible answers here, but always with, always with ing, you know, always with ing because you have the preposition for. When you use prepositions, you have to use the verb ending in ing. So the two possible answers in number two are for not coming or for not having come. For not coming to our party, por no venir, for not having come, por no haber venido. Both answers are acceptable, right? But remember, you need ing because you have four. Number three, Alice told Tom 
she thought he had scratched the car, and now you have to use of. Alice accused what? Tom of scratching. Yeah. Tom of scratched. Okay. Tom of scratching, Tom of scratch, Tom of scratching. Well, I want you to remember the prepositions. Here you have Tom of, and now the verb needs an ing. Don't forget that, please, in the exam. You have of. Of is a preposition, so the answer is Tom of scratching. Yes, Rosie, exactly. Or acceptable to Tom of having, ing, having scratched. A ver, eh, I don't know in Spanish, scratch, arañar, could be? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yes, is that the translation? Yeah. Good, thank you, friend. So two possible answers in number three. Alice accused Tom of scratching the car. Oh, rayar, rayar, rayar. Yes, yes. No arañar, it's rayar. Good. Yeah. It's more or less the same, I think. Yes. It, could be, it could be also um, un rasguño. También. Con, uh -huh. con un hombre. Ajá, ajá. Okay. So the answers can be Alice accused Tom of scratching or Alice accused Tom of having scratched the car. Number four. In the end, I got my sister to agree that I could borrow her dress. And you have to use lend. You see, borrow and lend. Borrow, pedir prestado, lend, prestar. So I finally persuaded. What is your answer? Who? Who can answer this? Ah, uh, my sister uh, to lend me, it's possible. My sister to lend me, my sister to lend me Esther, my sister to lend me Miriam, Alex, Simila, my sister to lend me. Sarita, be careful, it's not my, it's to lend me, no my. My, my sister to lend, well, well, the answer is, the answer you, you wrote, exactly. I finally persuaded my sister to lend me her dress. Me is very important. Number five. I told the hotel the, recep the receptionist that my room was too small. You have to use about. I complained. What? About my room being. About my room being. This is Sergio's answer. Sarai, about my room being. Do we have any different answer? About my room being. Correct, friends. This is the answer. I complain about my room being too small to the hotel receptionist. Exactly that. About my room being. Being. Now, number six, we were warned by the policeman about the traffic jam ahead, and you have to use there. The policeman warned us that there was, us there was, us that there are, us that there was, us there was. Well, listen, two possible answers here because that is optional. Maybe you remember that. You can use it or not. So the answer can be, the policeman warned us that there was a traffic jam ahead or the policeman warned us there was a traffic jam ahead. Both are acceptable using that or omitting that, okay? Because that in these sentences is optional. The other part of the homework was next page, I mean page number 35 in the uh, workbook, this exercise here, that I don't know what your opinion is about this kind of exercise, but in my case, personally, I hate this kind of exercise, friends, because I always get confused. 
it has been for me rather impossible to get the maximum marks in these exercises ever. I always have one or two mistakes. I don't know why this kind of exercise is so difficult for me. Let's see what happens to you, because sometimes my students are better than me. Let's see here. In number one, what is the letter that you consider to be the perfect choice? In number one, friends, tell me your opinions. E for Sarai, E for Sylvia, yes, E for Esther. What about Mike? Mike is F. Do we have another answer? Sergio is E and Miriam Benito is E. Friends, hi Miriam, how are you, friend? Mm, the answer is E. E number one is letter E. Their clothes are usually loaned because blah, 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 letter E. So number one is letter E. And number two, C, Sylvia, C, Sergio, C, Miriam, Alex coincide and Sarai too. Yes, yes, you are right. Perfect. It is letter C. Mike, it's letter C. Very good. Number three, letter G for Sylvia, for Sergio, for Sara. Yes. And for Mike, Alex is G, Sarai is G. What's your opinion, Mike? G, correct. Very good. G is the correct answer in number three. Let's go to four. A for Sara, A for Sylvia, A, A for Sarai. Alex coincide with that, similar to Esther, similar to Sergio. Yes, and Mike coincide with that. Yes, you all are right. A is the answer in number four. Let's go to five. Sergio thinks B, Sara B, Sylvia F, Alex D. My God, we have all the options. Esther is B. And Mike is D. My God. Number five is letter. Yes, Rosie. Letter B. Check it out, friends. In number five, it is letter B. Yes. No, sorry. You should try to find inspiration in unexpected places. You see how difficult this exercise is? My God. Number six. Opinions. F for Sergio. Alex coincide with Sergio. Sarai too. Sylvia thinks it's letter D, Esther F, Sarah F, I don't see Mike, I don't see Mike, Mike uh, B, well, it is letter F, friends, Rosie, yes, it's letter F. So I'm going to repeat all the answers in case you need this uh, reinforcement. In number one is letter E, in number two is letter C. In number three is letter G, in number four is letter A, in number five is letter B, and in number six is letter F. Congratulations to the people who have the people who have two, three or more correct answers because you are passing this imaginary evaluation. Well, this is reading and use of English. And now let's go to another difficult skill in English, which is listening. I would appreciate that you, using the workbook, go back to page 34. On page 34, we have this listening exercise. Can you see it? You see people in, in a cinema. Thank, thank you very much, Sergio. So please, Rosie, you see it. Laura, thank you, friends. Thank you for the feedback. Retroalimentación. Thank you for the feedback. <laughs> Well, friends, I want you to read the letters A, B, C, D, etc. Because maybe there is a word or a, an expression that is totally new for you. Use your translators or dictionaries. And then we will begin with the listening, right? Ah, we did it on Monday. Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, friends. You know, my memory is, uh, I always tell you, my memory is a bird in the palm of the hand. 
And mm. when you open your hand, what happens with the bird? It, it, it flies away. And if you have the window open, it escapes. My memory escaped many years ago. So let's go to the student's book in that case, because in the student's book on page 88, we have another interesting listening exercise. This listening here. Listening part two, working pairs, you are going to hear a student called Julie giving a talk to students in her year about the time her father was on, te te on a television quiz show, a television quiz show. <coughs> here in Spain, we have many quiz shows on television. This is the kind of show or program where people go, they answer difficult questions about maybe history or social events or maybe about art. And if you answer correctly, you earn something, sometimes money or sometimes presents, things like that. This is a quiz show. I'm going to give you a minute for you to read the text in case you need to use the dictionaries and then We'll start the listen. I have just sent you the audio. Maybe you have received it by WhatsApp group. Please tell me if you have received the recording of this listening. Good, good. Thank you very much. Now you are going to listen to this, but quietly, right? Patiently. We are not in a hurry. Good. So you are going to listen to this as many times as you need, because this is the advantage of being at home. And when you are ready to answer, send me a message for me to know that we can check the answers, right? Take your time. Don't uh, rush, please. It's not necessary to be running in this kind of exercise.
Goed, Alex. Good. Sarai finished. Mike finished. Say so you finished too. Good, Rossi. Very good. finish and Miriam finish. Excellent. I think we can check the answers. So it says 10, a lot of finish too. 10 minutes of fame. A TV producer invited Julie Sant to the quiz show while she was working in the belonging to the family. In the what? What is your answer? Shop for Rossi, small shop for Alex, small shop for Mike, Sarah, I think it's small shop, yes, small shop, Sarah, and they are uh, correct. You can write shop, yes, Sarah, or a small shop, because in the exam, Cambridge accepts the two answers, small shop or shop. So you have one correct answer, you all. She didn't go because she was worried that she would be too space in blank to answer any question. She was too what? Nervous, afraid for Alex, nervous for Mike, Rosie nervous, Sylvia nervous, Laura nervous, Sarai nervous. Well, excellent. The answer is nervous. She, she would be too nervous to answer any question. Julie's father used a to travel to the show. He used a what? Hire car, Alex, hire car, Mike, hire car, Rosie. Sarai, hire card. Sarah, hire card. Yes, it is. Sarah is with ED, right? Is is higher, no higher, no high, but higher. Rented, synonym of rent. So the answer is higher card. Higher. The spelling is H I R E D. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, Sarah. H I R E D. Higher card. Now, when he went to the show. He forgot to wear a, to wear a what? A tie, Rosie, a tie, Miriam. Alex thinks it's a tie. Mike considers it's a jacket, a jacket. <clears throat> and the rest, Sylvia tie. Yes, tie is the correct answer. When, she, when he went to the show, he forgot to wear a tie. He prepared for the show by learning large numbers of from the newspaper. A large, or no, 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 a. Learning large numbers of what? Maybe this was difficult. Does any one of you have an answer for number five? Word? No, it's not word. Nobody. Well, yes, Mike, very good. Trivial facts. Trivial facts. 
the contestants were asked to wait in the for the show to begin to wait in the what green room green room yes that's the answer in the green room it was a room very good a room painted green so the contestant were asked to wait in the green room for the show to begin he competed against a a bus driver and a bank employee number seven University lecturer for Rosie, university lecturer for Mike. Alex coincide with that answer. He coincides with the rest. So the answer is university lecturer, lecturer, conferencista, lecture, conferencia, lecturer, conferencista, universitario, university lecturer. The contestants were asked questions on on what? On what during the show? On general knowledge for Mike, on general knowledge for Rosie, Alex coincides. <coughs> Sarai also, yes, yes, friends, that's the answer. General knowledge. The show was broadcast almost spacing blank after it was recorded. What did you write in the spacing blank? Two months for Rosie, months for Miriam, two months later for Mike, and the rest. Well, the answer is two months the show was broadcast almost two months after it was recorded yes yes two months julie's father won a an a toy elephant he won two things one was a toy elephant and the other was yes yes a big television a big tv that's correct laura silvia sarai yes very good so the answers my friends are in number one, shop. In number two, nervous. Yes, Mike. In number three, hired car. In number four, tie. In number five, trivial facts. In number six, green room. In number seven, university lecturer. In number eight, general knowledge. In number nine, two months. And in number ten, television or big television. That that's that's all regarding um, listening. Jerry, sorry. Yes. I don't understand the answer from fifth, the trivial facts. So I understand trivial, but what does it mean facts? Facts, eventos, hechos. Claro, que lo, I have understood fa facts uh, as hechos, pero no le mucho el, el sentido. Well, what you read in newspaper normally are trivial facts, you know? because they mm -hmm. refer to different aspects of the cultural life of the country, but sometimes it's gossiping and sometimes it's something dealing with politics and sometimes it's some kind of scientific research. So, you know, that's ah, okay, okay. The trivial facts in general. Okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome, my friend. Now let's go to grammar, your favorite topic. Grammar in this unit number eight is dealing with reported speech, as you can see in this page you have here on the screen. The grammatical aspect of this unit is reported speech. But the reality is that many of my students are sick and tired of studying reported speech. They tell me that they have studied this in secondary school, in high school, in in during the career at the university. See that? So it's nothing new. However, as it is very important for your examination, I want to revise reported speech again. I prepare a PowerPoint to see the principal aspects 
uh, about this uh, grammatical aspect. So let's see, let's see this. Can you see it? Good, good. Thank you, friends. Thank you for the feedback. Excellent. Report your speech. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Look at this tricky question. This is a tricky question. Don't be fooled with this question. If you observe the question, the question is in present using does. In that case, we don't change the tense of the sentence. If the sentence was in present, you continue in present. If the sentence was in past, you continue using the simple past, etc. Be careful with the question. The normal reported speech is with the question in past. When the question is in present, present continues present with the changes, the, the logical changes. I love music. He says he loves music because the question is, what does he say? Right. So if in an examination or in any exercise, the person asks you in present with using the auxiliary does, be careful not changing the tense of the verb. But this is not a normal reported speech, you know. Normally, the question is in past. This is the regular normal reported speech. I love music. What did he say? Because this is the essence of reported speech. The essence of reported speech is repeating so something that someone said in the past. I have to repeat that because there is a person who was not in the meeting, a person who was not in the class, a person who was not in the conversation. And now I have to repeat what the other person said two days ago or three weeks ago or maybe 10 months ago or 26 years ago. Normally, when the person used the simple present love, I love, normally we report using the simple past. So love in present becomes loved in simple past. The conclusion is that in the reported speech, simple present becomes simple past. But I have to observe that the question is in past. What did? Be careful with that. So I repeat, simple present becomes simple past. I am sure that you remember this. Simple past, like here in this example, I visited her today. Simple past, when you report, normally becomes past perfect. Observe that that is between parentheses because it's optional. Remember, you can use it or not. It is also important to notice that not only the verb is changed, not only the tense is changed. There are other elements in the sentence that also change, like today in this example. Today, in the moment of the conversation, is not our today. So today becomes that day. He said he had visited her that day. And what about if the person uses present continuous? Well, present continuous in the reported speech becomes past continuous. Now becomes then. Observe that 
not only the verb changes, not only the tense changes, there are other elements that we have to change also to make sense. Well, I want you to observe this example. I, I, I didn't continue. Let me tell you something. I, I show you some examples, but there are more because maybe you remember that if the person it, during the conversation, the person uses present perfect when I report, I change the present perfect for past perfect. Remember that there are other changes. If the person speaks in future using will, when you report, you change will for would. If the person says I can, you change can for could, etc., etc. But this is something maybe you remember. Anyway, at the end of the class, I'm going to send you a, a shot, a picture where you can see all the tense changes for you to keep it in mind. But now I want to see something different. This mark, this person is not telling me something. This person is asking me to do something. This is in Spanish. What is the name of this kind of sentence? Uh, I always forget the name of this type of sentence in Spanish. It is uh, what, friend? So you remember when I ask you to do something, I say, Mike, open the door. Imperative. Oh, my God. Thank you, Mike. I had forgotten the word. Yes, this is when I have to report the imperative form. The imperative form is characteristic because you begin with the verb, something that is completely atypical in English. You know that in English we never, never omit the Soviet. In Spanish we can say, vino y me dijo, llegaron y comieron, because they, ellos, is implicit, the verb helps, but in English the verb doesn't help. So I need the Soviet, but not in the imperative form. In the imperative form, we begin with the verb. So this is an example of how you have to transform the sentence when you report an imperative form. Open the door, please. This is a request. This is a petition. And this is a very polite petition because the person is using please. When I report something similar to this, I use the infinitive to open. He asked me, me between parentheses, because you can use it or not. He asked me to open the door. Open the door, please. He asked me to open the door. So when the imperative is affirmative, open the door enter the classroom, come to the board. We report this using to. Not always the, 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 the person asks me to do something. Sometimes the person asks me not to, to do something. Like this, don't speak in class, please. You see, it's, it's, again, it's imperative but negative. Don't. In that case, we report using not to. In this position, not to. Don't speak in class, please. He asked me. Well, I have here, he asked me, me pidió, but it can be he told me, right? Me dijo. There are other possibilities, right? He told me not to speak in class. Don't speak in class. He told me, he asked me not to speak in class. Conclusion, in the imperative, when the person speaking uses the imperative affirmative, I report with the uh, infinitive, with, with two. And when the person asks me not to do something, I report using not to.
And now let's see how we report questions because there are differences. Media? Median, what is your question? <laughs> okay, median. Okay, thank you, friend. Well, this is the case when the person is not telling me something, the person is not asking me to do something. This is the example when the person is asking something, a question. Questions are divided into two principal groups. The questions that begin with interrogative words, interrogative words, for example, where, why, who, when, how, you see. In that case, when the question begins with one of these interrogative words, in the reported speech, we are going to begin with the same interrogative word. It means that now, when I report this question, I have to use where. But remember, if the question was in present, the question now, the reported question, is going to be in past. And in reality, the reported is not going to be a question anymore. It is not going to be a question because we are not going to use question mark, etc. So, when I have to report a question, principally questions with the verb be, in this case is, I have to be very careful with the position of the verb be. Observe. Observe where the verb be is in the reported speech. It's at the end. The verb be is after the Soviet wallet, not before, like in the real question. Yes. Where is my wallet? And now his wallet was. Present becomes past. Is become was. And now I have to use the correct position for the verb be. Because this is not a question anymore. I want you to observe that I have to make all the changes logically. Because now when I report... I cannot use my wallet because it, it was not my wallet. It was the wallet of a boy, Mark. So the possessive adjective is his. Many changes, many things that you have to keep in mind. Not always the questions begin with an interrogative word where, who, etc. Sometimes the question is simply that the person wants to know if yes or not. They are considered to be yes or no answer question. In this kind of question, they always begin with an auxiliary. Do in present or does, third person singular, or did in simple past. When you use present perfect, the auxiliary can be half. Have you lived in Madrid, for example? This is a different kind of question because you are not using where, why, who, when. For example, do you like tennis? When you report this, you are going to replace substitute do for the conditional if. He asked me if I... Present becomes past. If I liked tennis. Friends, if you don't understand something, let me know for me to help you. And this is extremely important. I think I'm going to send you this chart by the WhatsApp group for you to keep it in mind. These are the other changes, you know. Not only the tense changes, present becomes past, etc. Sometimes other elements need to change also. Now becomes then, today becomes that day, except, friends, except that the conversation took place uh, today in the morning, for example, and now we are in the afternoon, so today continues being today, right? But in the exams, we, we don't take that into account. Normally, today becomes that day. Here becomes there. 
there are exceptions logically, but not in the exam. Because if the conversation took place 25 years, but in the same place in my house, for example, this here continues being here, right? But normally in the exams, here becomes there because normally the conversation took place in any other place. This becomes that. Tomorrow becomes the following day or the next day or the day after. Next week becomes the following week or the next week or the week after. If you observe on the right hand, you'll see examples, right? I promise I will send you the chart. Yesterday in the reported speech becomes the previous day or the day before. You can choose any of the two because both are right. Last week becomes the previous week or the week before. A goal normally becomes previously or before. Observe the example. The letter came a few days ago. And when you report, you say, he said the letter had come. You see, because came is in past and it becomes past perfect. Had come a few days ago. No, a few day, days before. Tonight becomes that night because maybe the conversation took place many years ago. So tonight is a different night. If you have any question or something you don't understand, please send me a message for me to help you. Well, let's exercise this. I want you to go in the student's book. Let's go to page number 89. Page 89. This page that you can see on the screen because we are going to do exercise number two. This exercise here. Exercise two. For question one to six, complete the second sentence so that it has a similar meaning to the first sentence using the word given. Remember that exercise? Always present in the exams. Don't change the word given. You must use between two minimum and five maximum words, including the word given. Let's do this exercise. I want you to observe that the exercise continues below the picture. There are six sentences, right? As soon as you finish, send me a little message for me to check the answers, right? Thank you, Rosie. Okay, Laura. Mike. Sarai, thank you, friends.
Very good. People are finishing. Good, medium finish too. I think we can check the answers. Well, let's go to number one. Last night I saw a fantastic film, said Phil. But you have to use previews. So what is the answer? Phil told me that the, the what? What are your answers for this, if you have to use previews? Previous night he had seen. Previous night he had saw. Previous night he had seen. Yes, Alex, he's seen. Previous day he had seen, but previous day, it, it was not the previous day. Check it out. Yes, night, Mike. Yes, Mike. It is night. So the answer is, Phil told me that the previous night he had seen a fantastic film. Correct. Two, I'll return quite late from the theater tonight, said Elena, and you have to use back. Elena warned me that, that what, friends? That she would go back. Another answer. That she would turn back. That she would come back. I, I prefer, yes, I prefer come back, you know, no turn back. It's, it's better to say that she would come back, that she would get. Instead of turn, Mike, get back or come back, turn back, uh, changes. Yeah. A little bit, not much, Mike, in, in fact, not much, but a little bit the answer. So the possible answers here is Elena warned me that she would get back or come back quite late from the theater that night. And in number three, I won't be able for the show. No, sorry, I won't be late for the show, said Lucy. And you have to use arrive. Lucy promised she, she what? She would arrive on time. She would arrive on time. She would arrive on time. Yes. She would arrive in time. Yes. But at, no. With time, Mike, you can use in or on. Lucy promise. Yes, in is correct too. Lucy promised she would arrive on time, puntualmente. Or Lucy promised she would arrive in time, que llegaría a tiempo. So on time, in time, but never at time for the show. Number four, you can't borrow my camera, Mike, said his father. And you have to use allowed. Mike's father told him he, he what? He was not allowed to borrow. He was not allowed to borrow. Yes, and the rest of the class, do you agree with these people? Was not allowed to take. 
I prefer to borrow even Alex when take is not a crazy idea. Yes, but I think borrow is better because they are using borrow in the original sentence, right? Take is not a bad idea, I repeat. But in the exam, if they use borrow, please use borrow. Mike's father told him he was not allowed to borrow his camera. Do you understand, Alex? Thank you very much, friend. Number five. I know I got several answers wrong in this exercise, Hannah said, and you have to use mistakes. Hannah admitted that she, that she what? That she had got several mistakes, had made mistakes. Any other answer? Had mistakes get several mistakes well 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 listen listen everybody had mistakes had a lot of mistakes well listen to the ma this my friends with mistakes the collocation is the verb make no get no have uh, no 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 is make so the possible answers are hannah admitted that she made several several is important because she uses several uh, in the in the in the initial sentence. I repeat, Hannah admitted that she made several mistakes, or Hannah admitted that she had made several mistakes in the exercise. Yeah, this here, what is the yes. difference exactly between several and many? Mm, well, good question. It is not a big difference, you know, but many is more than several. But friends, when we begin analyzing the difference between several and many, it can be difficult to explain or it can be even ridiculous, you know. But the reality is that several could be uh, in Spanish varios errores um, and many, many, you know, many is many. So if I were in the position of this person, I would prefer to have several and not many. Okay. Good. Thanks. Well, six, I really enjoy the play Katie told George, and you have to use found. Katie told George that she very enjoyable, that she what? That she had really found the play. Had found the play. Had found the play. Very good, friends. Yes, yes. Katie told George that she had found the play or, or, yes, Laura, or maybe Katie told George that she found, see, simple pass is admissible too, Katie told George that she found the play very enjoyable or that she had found the play very enjoyable. Two possibilities here. And now, continue with these ideas of reported speech and things like that. Let's go to exercise number three. Why is it? Uh, Miriam, can you repeat the question? Miriam, what was your question? Sorry. Miriam, Miriam, talk to me. I mean, if the sentence is in past simple, why can't you write past perfect? Ah, yes, there is a reason for that. Yes, there is a reason for that. You, you see, the, the initial sentence was in simple past. So normally it must be past perfect. This is the normal reported speech. Yes. However, Cambridge has said the simple past in this example. Katie told George that she found the play very enjoyable because they say that there is no, how can I explain that meaning, substantial difference in the meaning of the two sentences. Anyway, media. In your case, and in my case too, when I, talk, uh, when I take my exams, it's better to use the past perfect, right? Because we have studied that simple past, when it is reported, 
we change it into past perfect. So if you use past perfect, I think it's a very intelligent solution, right? However, Miriam, I have to tell you the options, right? Because you are adults, you are intelligent people, and maybe tomorrow you are reading a magazine or you are reading an advertisement or you are reading something in English and you see that and maybe you think Jerry is lying to me because this possibility exists. Yes, this possibility exists, but we are going to take a very serious exam and I need I need to prepare you for the exam. So past simple becomes past perfect, right? So past perfect is the ideal answer. I don't know if I've been able to explain this to you. Sometimes, you know, my... Oh, thank you, Miriam, because my explanations sometimes are more confusing. Thank you very much, friend. Let's go to exercise three. Miriam, my pleasure. Remember that you will always be my monitor. Well, it says that... Uh, <laughs> Miriam, exercise three. Circle the correct form of the verbs in italics in each of these sentences from listening part two. You have number one in front of you, right? You have number one. Let me show you. Here we are in exercise number three. Let me go a little. Uh huh. Here, here, here. Correct. And he says, anyway, when she was asked, she just refused to even to even consider or she just refused even considering it difficult question refused ing or refused to yes no 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 median it is to it is infinitive after con uh, after refused so the correct answer is uh, anyway when she was asked she just refused to even consider it conclusion after refused infinitive because recently we studied verbs that are followed by ing and verbs that are followed by infinitive and refused is one of the verbs that normally are followed by infinitive with to. Continue with the other part of the exercise. There are only four. When you finish, let me know. You are really fast, friends. Well, let's see the second. He says, well, he saw his opportunity and offered to go and offer going on the show himself. To go, to go, going. More answers to go to going. We have all the options, but no, friends, the option, the real answer is to go. Offer infinitive. Offer infinitive. Offer to go. Offer to help me. <coughs> so remember, after offer, we use inf uh, infinitive with two. 
So the correct answer is to go three. He had to ask the producer, do you have, or if they got a spare one at the studio he could borrow? What is the answer here? Do you have, or if they got? Yes, 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 excellent. That's the answer, if they got. Four, in fact, yes, Mike. In fact, I don't think we've ever had an encyclopedia in the house, though I suggested to buy one or I suggested buying one for the occasion. To buy, buying, <laughs> we have all the options, buying, buying with ING is the correct, yes, is the correct option. No, Rose is buying. So suggest plus ING. Now, exercise four. Exercise four, page 89. Let's have a look to this exercise. Uh -huh. This exercise over here. Complete these sentences by writing the verb in brackets in the correct form. In the correct form, friends, Please don't make mistakes with this in the correct form in the gaps. So the idea is to steal or stealing, to lie or lying. That is the option. I'm going to give you some minutes. Send me a message as soon as you finish.
Very good. Well, let's check the answers. In number one, she admitted stealing. Uh, admitted ing. She admitted stealing the watch. Number two, Susan accused Brian of you have the preposition of. So when in the exam, you have the preposition of, at, in, on, below, behind. When you have one preposition, normally we use ing. So in these cases of lying. But what about number three? Do you have any idea? Mark's mother agreed buying or to buy him a new car. Opinions. To buy... Sa Sarai thinks it's to buy, to buy, to buy Rosie and Mike, Alex, to buy, yes, to buy is the correct answer, the infinity with two, to buy. In number four, the children apologize for, for is a preposition. So we have to, yes, break in, yes, break in, Rosie, correct, because four, yes, Sylvia, excellent, yes, because for is a preposition, so without hesitation, we use ing. Five, Peter has invited me visiting or to visit. Yes, Sergio, to visit. Very good. Yes, Sarai, to visit. So invite to. Very good, to visit, Mike. Excellent. Now, in number six, Ivan persuaded his mother buying or to buy. Sergio considered it to buy. Similar to Sylvia, Sarai to buy, Laura to buy, yes, friends, Rosanna to buy, correct. To buy is the correct answer here in number six. In number seven, Karen has promised, yes, to visit, to visit Laura and Sergio. Rosie considers to visit, and you are all correct, yes, infinity with two. Karen has promise to visit me after the summer, promise to, promise to. Eight, I would recommend, and here you have would, I would recommend installing, installing, to install, it is ing, installing. So with would, ing, installing new computers in the office. Number nine, can I remind Everyone sending or to send? To send, Sergio. Laura coincides with Sergio, is to send. Sarai to send. Very good, friends. Correct. It's to send. Yes, Mike, to send. And number 10, Martin warned me not to use for Sergio, not to use for Laura Sanchez. Sarai considers not to use, not to use. Yes, Rosie. Yes, Mike. Not to use is the correct answer here. Not to use. Exercise five, my friends, is more difficult because it's similar to reality. This is the exam. The exam is going to evaluate this aspect this way, you know, this way, this way. For question one to six, complete the second. Remember that constantly doing something similar to this. Uh, for question one to six, complete the second sentence so that it has a similar meaning to the first sentence using the word given. Don't change the word given. You must use between two and five words, including the word given. Oh my God, it's tiring. Then, you really shall, no, you really should see the film. You really should see that film, Pablo, his friend said. And now, similar sentence using advised. So it's, it is something like Pablo's friend advised him to see the film. You see, Pablo's friend advised him to see the film. I separate this because they are going to evaluate this way. 
they are going to give me one mark for advise him and the second mark for to see. But what about the rest? Let's finish the class with this exercise. So as soon as you finish, send me a little message for me to check it and assigning the homework. Good, Sergio. Friends, we don't have more time because I have another class now, you know. So I'm going to check this exercise next class, if you don't mind. I have already sent you the homework, which is connected with the topic of uh, reported speech. I hope you have received it in the WhatsApp group. Have a look, check it. 
and we are going to check this exercise. Thank you, Laura. We are going to check this exercise and, and the rest of the homework next class. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, friends. Have a beautiful weekend. Right, have a beautiful weekend. And I hope you can overcome this terrible situation we are living without any consequences. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. See you next week. Bye, friends. Thank you. Bye bye.